about those questions. And he started to quarrel with them, to say very nasty things about our newspaper, about the owners, about these journalists. And these journalists are not, I mean, some of them were really young journalists who started their career with new, I mean, maybe 20 years old reporter asking the question, and he's dashing in front of, in a live broadcasting event. Can you imagine? So this is where it started, and how it started, the crackdown against our newspaper. And since he was not able to answer questions, the measure he developed was to deny our reporters to attend press conferences. So the police was waiting in front of the conference room and checking from which newspaper you are. The others are free, but if you are from Zaman, you are not allowed. So this was, this was uh, one of the earlier steps. But later he was not even satisfied with that and they canceled our press cards. You know, reporters were given press cards by, by government and they canceled them. And he started to, bo to call boycott of our newspaper in the rallies. I mean, I mean, just imagine that the 40% of Turkish society is supporting is a very popular person. And he is directing that crowd against us. So we are a tiny newspaper. Yes, we, have, we are the largest, but this is just a newspaper, it's not a, I mean, not a security company. <laughs> we have nothing to defend ourselves other than our pens and our cameras, that, that was it. And so he was calling not to buy the newspaper, and then he started to call the company not to give, not to purchase advertisement from us in order to lead us into financial bankruptcy. And then court cases. You know, when this uh, event happened in the 4th of March last year, we had 1,000 court cases. I mean, started or triggered by Erdogan government. Can you imagine? <coughs> so we, we needed an army of lawyers to defend our journalists, our, uh, ourselves. And some, some days, I mean, 20 of our reporters were in court. They, they are obliged to appear there. So we, I mean, I was kidding sometimes that, are we doing our journalism or continue attending court cases, courts to, to, to defend ourselves? So, but, I mean, there, there have been other tactics, for instance, as I said, we had very respected intellectuals, columnists. They were threatened. They were said, leave that newspaper. And sometimes offered very big amounts of salaries to, to transfer to pro government uh, newspapers or media. Luckily, I mean, we were united and we were supported by, by our readers. And although there has been a decline in our, news, in our circulation, you know, we, as I said, our uh, circulation in the last three, four years, the average was uh, over one million. But when that event happened, we were 600,000. Because of those protests and boycotts and uh, lots of uh, developments. So this is, uh, this is how we came to that time. So this was one of the last steps. So he was not able to silence us through sending tax inspectors, court cases, threats, boycotts, etc. So a court decided to, to send, to, to appoint trustees to run the company that was running the newspaper, television channel, and the English Daily, and the weekly news magazine whole media group. So they were not able to come because of the protests in front of the newspaper, so they came with this police to crack down and to enter into the, into the building that I was, I was uh, there and with, with our reporters with, and the families of our reporters. Together, it, it was first, of course, it was an, an important defender of democracy, but it was also a house for mo 